Yes, yes, I mentioned volcanoes and I mentioned sunspots and obviously you say what do they do to the climate? Anything that affects the amount of energy coming in which is energy from the sun and you can either block it by adding you know dust and so on into the air or increasing clouds for example or you can reduce it by just reflecting more of it from the ice surface right or sometimes the energy coming in from the sun itself can change not because we are moving closer and further or we are tilting away and so on but because sun itself has a lot of things going on it has magnetic lines if you don't know what a magnet is ask your parents and they probably can buy you a little magnet that is safe to play with and it has these knots on its surface because it has this energy being produced that is coming to us every single day every second right so the last ice age was a while ago now you know it peaked some 20,000 years ago and we are going to be waiting a while for another one if it is a hundred thousand year cycle right now the earth is not in a favorable position for a real ice age just in terms of the orbital parameters, the tilt and the obliquity and the precession and the way land is distributed is not so bad but the planet is too tilted and the orbit around the sun is too round so we are not getting very far away. For the past 15,000 years the earth has been thawing most of its glaciers almost non-stop which means it is allowing the glacier to melt now remember we are saying last 15,000 years so it is well before the industrial revolution so it's not so much about climate change but natural change right so the glaciers have just kept on melting water levels in the seas have uh, you know been rising by meters per century all naturally areas that were attached to each other become became separated great britain became an island because the sea level rose again and the la the ocean bottom got covered along with japan tasmania sumatra and java which also became islands the higher temperatures and the disappearing snow meant that the trees could grow again Pr primeval forests were advancing all over North America Europe and Asia the Ice Age was at an end right so the forest which got either buried under the ice or they died because it was too cold then began to again go northward just like people they are following climate right biology always does its thing its reproduction and survival and procreation and few centuries ago it suddenly became really cold again for this reason the period from around the 15th century to the 19th century is sometimes called the little ice age we kept saying ice age ice age ice age now we are saying a little ice age because it got a little colder the ice became a little bit more and there is plenty of evidence that this happened paintings from that time for example feature a surprising number of uh, wintery scenes crops failed if it is too cold and we have become predominantly agriculturalists because now we are in the Holocene and we forgot about our hunter gatherers except for some tribes in Amazonia or Africa and so on everybody became dependent on agriculture suddenly the climate gets cold then the crops cannot grow as well remember the greenhouse that we have to grow things that's to control the heat and the weather and if the weather becomes cold then we cannot control large agricultural lands right rivers froze up and the glaciers grew bigger again thousand years ago however it was an extra warm period during that period Europe had very good harvests of crops okay lots of wine was cultivated in the UK right now UK doesn't grow much wine all of that goes in France and Germany and you know mainland Europe so all the way to the middle of England you had wine growing if you don't know what wine is don't worry it's grapes that are grown and fermented to make you know 
uh, wine and so on um, right so lots of wine was cultivated all the way to the middle of England and the peaches grew on trees in Belgium so that's how cold it was we are not entirely sure what caused these differences most scientists blame volcanoes volcanoes go off all the time somewhere but sometimes there are many going off which means they are putting a lot of dust into the uh, atmosphere which can block the sunlight and cool the climate right most scientists blame the volcanoes 1000 years ago they were keeping calm and not blowing their tops around the world so there was not much dust to stop the sun's rays getting through to the surface 600 years ago so now you go back to about the 15th century however there were a few big volcanic eruptions the dust from the volcanoes blocked the sunlight and the earth cooled down and the ice grew and once ice starts growing you again have the ice albedo feedback remember these are the things that are fundamental as soon as somebody says ice is growing or melting you should say ha ha I know about the ice albedo feedback the dust from the volcanoes blocked the sunlight the earth cooled down and the ice grew but there is another suspect that might be responsible for the heat of thousand years ago and the cold of 500 years ago and these are called sun spots if you look at the sun obviously you don't want to look at uh, the sun directly it's dangerous it will hurt your eyes don't do it there are ways to get pictures of it using other methods where you see dark spots on the sun we call them sun spots sun spots are dark spots on the sun they look the look like little dots but they can actually be bigger than the earth because it's so far away they look like tiny dots but they are, they can be bigger than the earth itself these spots are dark because they are a little cooler than the rest of the sun sun is very bright emitting a lot of energy but if you have a little less light coming in it looks darker they came uh, they come and go with a rhythm of around 11 years so ele every 11 years you have this and recently this year in 2024 we had a big burst of northern lights in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere coming to very very low latitudes being spectacular because this 11 year cycle produced a lot of these rays from the sun that come and create you know they break oxygen atoms into ions and create this dancing light show at higher latitudes and there is a lot of physics of that that you don't have to worry about but if you google northern lights or ask your parents they can find you amazing videos of those northern lights when there are lots of sunspots the sun is extra active this also makes the northern lights more likely as I just mentioned by the way I, and you know those dancing green curtains of light you can sometimes see in Alaska and Canada's north and because in the south there is not much land at those latitudes we don't see them too often but people who live on Antarctica the scientists can see them okay so maybe you are from the higher latitudes and you have seen them all the time you think that the activity of the Sun would have an influence on the climate on earth because the energy coming would obviously be affected that more solar activity causes warming and less results in cooling during the little ice age there were indeed oddly low number of sunspots that means Sun was uh, not as active at least if you believe the reports written by astronomers at the time we were it was before satellites before telescopes and people were watching and writing them carefully watching and writing them but it seems that they didn't record everything far from it in fact people you know in some cultures they were very observant and they kept looking and other cultures were busy doing agriculture and other things or fighting wars and moving and so on but they didn't record everything so there is a good chance that there were just many suns just as many sunspots as now as well but if we use the evidence as recorded then we have to ask why is it more important for us to know that this if why is it important for us to know whether there were more sunspots or fewer sunspots if sunspots could change climate back then they could do it now too then maybe we shouldn't just be blaming co2 but also the sun itself 
for global warming. Quite a lot of people have tried to pin their hopes on this scenario that our emissions of CO2 and greenhouse gases is not a big deal. It's because of sunspots. But unfortunately, during an active period of the sun, there is a temperature increase of only 0.1 degree centigrade at most and a lazy period for the sun doesn't even cause a temperature drop of 0.1 degree uh, centigrade or Fahrenheit so sunspots don't have much to do with the little ice age and with the warming that is taking place now we have to be careful because if sunspots were going in the same direction as volcanic eruptions let's say a lot of volcanoes went off and they created a lot of dust and blocked sunlight and sun began to have fewer sunspots and became less active and sent less energy to us then the two can combine and create a little ice age similarly we are increasing the greenhouse gases and then the sun is active or less active or more active but the difference is the sunspots have a 11 year cycle and we have been watching it very carefully since the 20th century and we know that the sunspot activity, sun essence, radiation, energy change does not explain the global warming since the industrial revolution. Okay, So this is also reflected by the way in the most recent data about sunspots and temperature over the past decades the sun has appeared to be getting less and less active but the temperature just keeps on rising so here is some cartoons or uh, illustrations of how people in Netherlands were playing ice hockey in town because everything was frozen over and you know a man and his wife were happily skating around and this is a uh, woman is saying where is my sunshine because her agriculture was failing maybe and here is the old man getting strong winds and feeling cold and getting blown away and trying to do some ice fishing maybe and here is a dog that just probably died and the duck is saying my lake is becoming smaller and smaller okay so we'll come back and see a little bit more about how we do detective work on the past climates how we take the ice course remember we said ice can build and build and build and build which means we can drill into the ice and pull out a nice ice core and we'll see that it has these tiny bubbles as the snow falls and freezes it's keeping a little pockets of air and the air has the greenhouse gas concentrations of the time evidence of temperatures of the time so if you get a long ice core maybe it'll allow you to do detective work and say if I go back a few hundred years or a few hundred thousand years can I get bubbles that tell me what the CO2 level was at the time, what the temperature was and so on and so forth. So we'll come back and learn a little bit about how scientists do these detective works so beautifully explaining the past climates. Right? See you in the next podcast.